I'm gonna get crap for this one. The New Yorker recently released an article why normal music reviews don't work for Taylor Swift. It's been bugging me because it brings up something I've been grappling with for a while. Some artists are immune to criticism because they're too big or too complex for a critic to understand. The New Yorker explains how Swifties believe everything in Taylor Swift's latest album, The Tortured Poets Department, is purposeful, even if the average person may think it's a sign of weaker writing. For example, if throughout the album, the listener feels like they're suffering through the work, well, that's on purpose. And when Swift rhymes wife with bike instead of life, well, only to the untrained eye is that a weak rhyme. A real Swifty would understand that it's brilliant. And if you don't understand why, well, it's because you haven't listened to her catalog closely enough. Essentially, the argument The New Yorker provides is that critics can't review Taylor Swift because she's too smart, too big, and too powerful for the average person to understand. Unless you're a fan, you can't critique her. Before we get any further, a large disclaimer. Critique of the tortured poets department is not the point of this video. I have nothing against Taylor Swift and I don't have any problems with fans enjoying things. Easter eggs can be fun and it's cool to get deep into the lore of something. But I do have a problem with this argument the New Yorker and some fans are proposing. That criticism is irrelevant if the critic isn't a fan of it. And perhaps even more damning that the critic can't possibly ever understand it. No matter how you slice it, this isn't a healthy way of thinking. Art should always be subject to critique. By putting something out into the world, you are opening yourself up to criticism. People may not like what you make, and they have an ability to say so. Unless what? You're too important? Understandably right now, the industry revolves around musicians like Taylor Swift. But should she be immune to bad reviews because of that? Because she's bigger than everyone else? Let's take that logic and flip it to a band I like. Pink Floyd is an important, influential rock band, but I still think some of their albums are terrible. For example, I wouldn't give a good review to Momentary Lapse of Reason. The band suffers immensely with the loss of Roger Waters in the 80s, and cheesy pop doesn't work for the Floyd. But okay, that's a band I'm a fan of. What if I were to talk about an artist that I hadn't listened to before making a video? Well. I did that with 100 Gex. But before I published that video, I did research on the topic. This is what most critics do all the time because they know how important context is for a review. These critiques that are coming out of Pitchfork and others about TTPD are not baseless, but okay, not all of them are fans, but that doesn't mean that their opinions are any less relevant. But some Swifties and The New Yorker are claiming that these opinions are less relevant. If you claim TTPD can only be understood if you're a real fan, then we have to assume by that logic that only fans should review albums like Tortured Poets Department. In that case, what's the point? Should we as a culture just shrug our shoulders, give the whole Swift catalog a perfect score and move on? Why even have reviews or critiques then? This last exasperated question is essentially what The New Yorker is getting at. But I think they're missing the point. Reviews and criticism are meant to show the general public whether they may like something or not. They're meant to provide an interpretation of an album, including whether the artist achieved what they set out to do, what the artist did well, and where they may have missed the mark. Taylor Swift is a phenomenally successful artist, and even she has albums that are not as good as others. No one can achieve perfection every day of their lives. Honestly, this argument reminds me of a similar one made years prior about a show called Rick and Morty. Back in the late 2010s, there was a type of Rick and Morty fan the internet made fun of. This type of fan was infamous for telling others that if they didn't like the show, there was one simple reason. They weren't smart enough to understand it. A satirical copypasta came about as a result of this. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Rick and Morty. The humor is extremely subtle and without a solid grasp of theoretical physics, most of the jokes will go over a typical viewer's head. It goes on and on and on, but the talking points are eerily similar to what Swift fans or even Marvel Universe fans are arguing. That we must, as a culture, dismiss any critique that fans do not agree with because non-fans don't have the depth or experience to understand it. And that's just not right. Fans can enjoy what they like. But if non-fans don't think it's good, it doesn't mean they're wrong. And if their opinions are backed up with examples, they're not any less relevant than the ones fans provide. But that's just my opinion. Maybe I don't have a high enough IQ to understand what's going on here. Maybe I'm not enough of a fan of The New Yorker to understand what they're really saying. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Bill Cooper, and as always, I love you all.